Warning, the content of the video that you are about to watch pertains to the harvest of fur-bearing wildlife through the practice of ethical, sound wildlife management of modern-day trapping. If this bothers you, if it triggers you in any way, shape, or form, please leave this channel now. Hey trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. Uh, guys, before we get started into this too far, I need to make a, a request. If your name was Mike and you stopped by my booth at the Iowa Trappers Convention looking for a bottle of Death Valley, if you would please contact me, I would sure appreciate it. I wrote your name and address down so that I could ship you a bottle and somehow or another I've misplaced that piece of paper. So if you could contact me so I could get that shipped out to you, I'd sure appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into today's video. So yesterday we talked about uh, farmland locations and what to look for to kind of figure out where your fox and coyotes and your cats all travel. Today we're going to talk about timber locations. It's really hard today to not find a timber that doesn't have some roads going through it. Most of them have been logged a little bit or, or the, for deer management, they've got ATV access, generally speaking. So uh, let's take a look at some of those kind of locations and uh, see what we can see. All right, gang. So here we are on a really nice long timber road. Uh, this drops off down over to a big bottom is what it does and where a set of old railroad tracks used to come through now that's been mowed up pretty nice down there we'll try to slip down here a little ways and uh it's a really nice t intersection there's a there's a creek that runs on the other side of where those railroad tracks used to go let's we'll just t slip down there and take a look we'll watch old timber here for just a minute she's pretty interested in that spot right there i'll bet she marks it Yeah, maybe not. Is she sure hanging there for some reason? No. Yeah. And we'll do a kickback anyway. We may not mark it, but we'll kick back there anyway. So, anyway, what we've got here, we've got this really nice long old railroad bed that runs through here going that way. We've got this really rough brush here from the, from the, uh, the creek right there. As we come around, we've got that railroad bed that goes that way. And then we've got this timber road right here. Guys, you can't, this, you can't get any better than this. This just screams fox, coyotes, bobcats, red fox, gray fox, both. So I would pop a set here at this corner. I would probably put a set right there underneath that cedar tree right there. Then I would come on around poke in another set right in along there somewhere and then again well she just marked that right there then i would put in another set right here on this corner we're looking right now as we look up this road we're looking pretty well due north the sun is off to to our our left here on this side to the west this way we would we would catch any either wind or any wind actually as it comes through. Now these hills, these hills and the trees and the timber are gonna play with you a little bit. That's why it's best when you do this in these in these type of locations where you've got some hills, you've got some creeks, you've got some timber, to make sure you cover all your bases because the wind will swirl, the wind will play with you, the wind will switch directions. And we it's very important to always have that wind blowing in your favor so you've always got sets working for you that's that's the utmost important as i said before and i'll say it again if they can't find you if they can't see your sets if they can't smell your sets you cannot catch them that is that is so important all right guys so here's a typical four-wheeler trail coming down through here Again, drops off into a big ravine, a big ditch down there. Uh, anything that's hunting up along that ditch is going to turn and come up these, these trails like this. Now, I know there's some states such as uh, New York where you're not allowed to set on the trails like this in pub on public ground. And what I would do there is find where the game trails cross 
and then I would go back the legal distance that I had to be off of the trail and put my sets in there along those game trails, whether they're deer trails or rabbits or whatever it might be. That's the way I would approach that. Now, the other thing being, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know here anyway, you want to try to get into these places if you can, especially on public ground. You want to try to get into them, try to get into them either ahead of deer season, whether it's a shotgun or the rifle season, or wait 10 days, two weeks later after that shotgun or rifle season has closed. They get really goosey, okay, when, when, that, when that season's going on. Uh, they know if they hang out on these roads very much, very long, they're going to get shot at. So if you can get in there ahead of time or wait a little while and then go back in, I think you're going to have a lot better success at it. I think because what I've noticed is they'll hit these roads and they might run them, oh, 50, maybe 75 yards, and then boom, they jump off of them just as quick as they can if they run them that far. They'll jump off of them just as fast as they can and get into the brush as quick as they can because so they don't get shot at. Not only that, but you don't want some deer hunter coming down through here with his 308, seeing a coyote hung up in a trap and, and blow him half in two. That's not cool either. So get in there ahead of time or wait 10 days, two weeks later after that season's closed and then get in there. Not only that, but by then, if you're waiting till afterwards, they should have the cripples and the gut piles pretty well cleaned up. They should be hungry again. They should start working your sets like they normally would. That's just my opinion. All right, gang. So here we are. We're on a main graveled road that runs through this timber. And what I would do in a situation such as this is I would creep along here with a vehicle really slow and easy like. And if it's legal and you can do it, I would find where those game trails come out and cross these roads walk back in off of them the legal distance that you have to be or the safe distance you have to be to be away from from folks you know be away from people spotting my catch and i would either pop in my my footholds there or i if you could and it's legal you could hang snares on those trails as well because eventually they're all going to cross these roads okay so that's an easy way to pick up a bunch of predators really fast really quick Now, if for some reason you think those predators are running this road and staying out here on it, which sometimes they do, you'll see that later, especially late in the winter, um, what I would do then is go back in there on those trails, hang you uh, a rag or, or a pop bottle or something with some bait lure in it, a good long distance call lure, a good loud bait such as either Death Valley or Texas Peg Leg, Texas Canyon Breaks, something of that sort to get that traveling out across this road on the air currents to pull those predators back down that trail back in there where you want them that's a good easy way to uh, make them come to you instead of you having to go to them all the time okay guys and another really good place to look for good locations especially if that timber's been logged there's generally going to be a loadout area where they've skid all the logs up to it to that one spot and those, there'll be multiple roads going from that spot out to and back to that spot. So when you find those, when you find that loadout area, go from there and go down those roads. And I'm telling you, they'll, it's, it's, again, it's the center of the hub of the wheel and the spokes all going out from there. Those are fantastic locations when you can find them. Uh, for gosh sakes, don't pass them up. All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and end this video here. I, I think it's been helpful to some of you. Uh, I sure do appreciate you tuning in and watching. If you would, please just hit that thumbs up for me. That's all I'm asking. Once again, this is Dale Billingsley with another one. Signing out.